today we are talking about how to engrave a photo using a laser. Specifically, we are going to be using XCS software and the Xtool S1. Hey there, I'm Sarah. You're watching Creative Ramblings. We talk a lot about lasers on this channel. If you are a laser crafter, consider subscribing. I am here every week with new videos to help you move forward in your creative journey. So this video is an XCS tutorial focused specifically on photo engraving. If you want a full XCS tutorial, I have one linked down in the description. I just published that a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to leave the photo engraving part separate because I feel like it needs its own video. There's a lot of detail that we're gonna talk about today, and I want you to walk away from this video being confident in engraving photos. So we're using the Xtool software, which powers all Xtool lasers. And I'm gonna be working with the S1. This is a 40 watt laser on here. I chose the S1 because this is a gantry style laser, meaning the head of this laser moves back and forth on an axis and engraves in horizontal lines. Most Xtool lasers are like this. The F1 and the F1 Ultra are a little bit different system. And so if you are engraving a photo using the F1, your software settings are going to be a little bit different. But for every other Xtool laser, the software tutorial is going to work for you. So before we get into engraving, you need to have a photo. A good quality photo is going to produce a good quality engraving. So if you have a photo that you took on an old phone with low lighting that's kind of blurry, you're not going to get the best engraving quality. However, if you have a professional photo that a photographer took of your family, you're gonna get a great result. There are two file types you can use. A file type has three or four little letters at the end of the file name. PNG and JPEG are both image files or bitmap files. Those are gonna work best for photo engraving. If you have a photo editing software and you are able to remove the background of your photo before bringing it into XCS, that's ideal. If you have a paid version of Canva, you can do it there. You can also do it in Imager, and I believe there's a PicMonkey version to remove the background as well. If you're not able to do that, there are some options in XCS. We're gonna open up Xtool Creative Space. I am going to list the version of the software that I'm using. If yours looks a little bit different, we are probably operating on slightly different versions of the software, but most of the functions should be the same. So I'm in Xtool Creative Space and I'm going to upload an image. You can use this little box on the top left corner. So there's a lot we can do to this image before we engrave. So the first thing I wanna do is make my canvas a little bit smaller so I can see this. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. So let's start over here on the right. This is my Xtool S1. It is there, it is not connected yet. Um, I can define the material. So we're gonna engrave on a couple different materials. The first one is going to be three millimeter basswood. You notice when you bring in an image, so a PNG or a JPEG, your only option is to engrave. You don't have the option to cut or score or anything like that, just engrave. Then down here we have power, speed, passes, lines per centimeter. Those are all normal things that we see when we're cutting and engraving SVG files. There's a few different things here. The biggest thing to notice is the bitmap mode. If I click on this drop down here, I'm going to see seven different options. And if I change this, I don't see too much of a change in the picture. I'm not actually going to see what's happening, but these are different engraving modes. There is a link to a article on Xtool's website that goes over each one of these seven modes and gives you examples of what they look like. So that is really, really helpful. I highly recommend you take a look at that. For right now, we are going to choose grayscale. And I'm going to adjust these a little bit. We're gonna go a power of 25, a speed of 100, one pass, 
and I'm going to bring the lines per centimeter up to 160. Lines per centimeter is just literally how many lines are being engraved per centimeter. The closer the lines are together, the more detail you're going to get on the image. And we're going to leave the engraving mode bi-directional. So that is everything on the right side. So now we need to do a few things with this image. So let's go up to the top. We have the X and Y axis, which is just where this is placed on the canvas. Then we have the width and height. So I can change the width and height just by dragging things here, or I can change them manually up here. You saw I was able to rotate the photo. I can also rotate it like this and put in specific numbers if I want. These are some alignment tools here. All of this you'll find when you're working with SVGs as well. Then we have some items up on top here. Well, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take away some of this background. So I can crop the image, which just allows me to crop it down to take away some of the background. But instead of using crop, I am going to create a mask. So if I go over here and I'm gonna use a circle, you can also use a rectangle or a triangle. And I'm gonna draw that circle over just her head here because that's really the only part that I want to work with. Then I'm going to highlight both the image and the circle. I'm going to right click and create a mask. What that does is it takes away the background of the photo and just leaves me with the part that I want to engrave. From here, I can adjust this and fine tune it a little bit. And then when I'm ready, I can click done. Now, if at any point I wanted to change that mask, I can right click again. I can take the mask off or I can edit it. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. Now let's take a look at these items up on top. So these are the same things that we got when we right clicked to release the mask or to edit the mask. But let's start over here on the left. First option is to edit. And so we talked about being able to remove the background ahead of time, but I didn't in this photo and I'd like to remove some of it. So the first area is a magic wand. And if I click on some of this water back here, it's going to take away anything that has that same color. So I can go through and try to remove most of the background using this magic wand. That's about as much as I'm going to get with the magic wand. The next tool here is just an eraser. I can change the size of it. And I can come in and just remove all the rest of the background. This isn't as precise as a background removal tool on some photo editing softwares like Canva, but it'll get the job done. So we're just going to go and remove all the rest of the background. So I am happy with that. I can save my image. The next option here is trace. If I click this button, it will actually turn the image or the bitmap image, the PNG, the JPEG into an SVG. So what it's doing right now is it's recognizing the lines and it's creating lines for me. You only wanna trace if you then wanna go cut this graphic, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna engrave. So we're gonna cancel that. The next one is filter. So if you want to create a very specific look, let's move this over so we can see it. You've got some cool options here. And there's some really neat looks. This comic one is kind of fun. So you can play around with this too. Again, that's personal preference. Next up, we have adjust. So if you want to fine tune some of your photographs here, you can do that here. In my experience with the wood that we're going to engrave on, I want to change the grayscale just a little bit. I want to bring up some of the whites and bring down some of the darks. Not too much, just a little bit, but this is totally up to you to play around with. And then we talked about crop and outline would just add an outline to our image, which we don't necessarily need to do. I'm gonna actually connect my S1 so we can get going with the engraving. This is the basswood we're engraving on. So it is just a thin little ornament. And basswood is nice because there's not a lot of grain. Grain is beautiful in wood, but when you're putting a detailed photograph on it, the grain can kind of mess with your image. 
if you're using a piece of wood that has a lot of grain. Ideally, you want that grain to run vertical because your image is going to be engraved horizontally. You just get a little bit better outcome. So we can stick this in the machine. I have my honeycomb in here and I really like to use these little metal clips to hold the item down, especially when it's small and lightweight. Then I can position the crosshairs directly over the basswood, close this, and I'm ready to auto measure and mark. The S1 does not have a camera, so we operate using a marking system, which is a really easy way to just move the laser, mark off the space that you are measuring or that you want to engrave in, and then you can put your image inside that area. So I've got my little box there. I'm just gonna shrink my photo down. You can enlarge this a little bit. All right, I'm happy with the placement there. You can go ahead and process. It's really beneficial to have Air Assist running while you're engraving photos. It's gonna remove any smoke or soot that's happening in your machine. Um, I have mine just set on auto on my S1. Next up, we're gonna engrave on a dark background. So this is a aluminum business card. It is really thin. If you've ever bought an X-Tool machine, you probably got a couple of these as a sample material, but we're gonna alter the graphic a little bit because this is a dark background and not a light background. But we can place it in the machine the same way, auto measure and mark it. So now we've got that dark colored aluminum business card. So we need to change our image just a little bit. Up here under adjust, we are going to leave the grayscale the same, but going to invert the image. And that changes where the light colors were are now dark and where the dark colors are are now light. Because our background is no longer light, our background is dark. So then we can change the material. And I like these settings, a power of 20, a speed of 200. I'm just gonna increase those lines per centimeter. And we're gonna stick with grayscale. And we'll get that lined up in the marking area and we can process. I really love the way the photo engraving comes out on a darker background. It just really pops. So now let's try this same engraving on a slate coaster. This is also a dark background, but it's stone. It has a little bit more texture to this. So let's see how this one turns out. So for the stone coaster, we're going to leave the image inverted. The inverted option is always a good option when you have a dark background. So I've got rock coaster selected. We're gonna go with 25 power, 180 speed, stay at grayscale, and bump up the lines per centimeter to 180. And there's the Slate Coaster, another image that really pops on that dark background. So we covered photo engraving using XCS and an X-Tool laser. This tutorial should apply to whatever X-Tool laser you have. Remember that the F-Series is going to have a little bit different functions because it's a different style laser. In order to get perfect photo engraving, just keep doing it. Repetition is going to get you close to perfection. You're gonna go through and be able to adjust those settings, maybe the sharpness, maybe the grayscale, maybe you're gonna use different bitmap modes, but now that you know where all of that is in XCS, you'll be able to play around with it and come up with perfect photo engraving for you. 
If you want to see the full XCS tutorial, I have it linked down in the description. And if you are a laser crafter, consider subscribing. I am here every week with new videos helping you move forward in your creative journey. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.